So how did you, I mean, how did you get your very first deal? Why did you decide real estate? And then what did your first investment look like? So when I graduated college, I got a accounting job at a CPA firm. No, I'm so I sorry. For, <laughs> I know I lasted six months. Okay. Yeah. Next season. <laughs> and I decided I was just going to be a stay at home mom. And then uh, my friend's dad actually needed someone part time just to manage some apartment complexes. So I agreed to do it. And it was a little tiny room with boxes of papers and a a drawer full of keys. And he's like, here you go. Can you work with this? So it started with 40 units and then um, now it's 80 units. So I just looked at what he was doing and he has a bunch of commercial properties too. And I just said, why, why can't I do that? So um, I found a partner who had money and I said, you know, I've been doing this for a year for this big complex. I know what I'm doing and I can handle a duplex. So we looked at one duplex um, and we bought it right away. (laughs) There was no other offers. It was in a really small town. Um, And then from there, I just started growing and going out on my own. And but that was how I got my start is I took a job where I was involved in the day to day and it really made me take action. I think if I didn't leave my accounting job and go to this, I probably never would have gotten to real estate investing at all. That's such a good point. Uh, I I think that getting started that way, I think a lot of people overlook that. The idea of like, why don't I get started with a job sort of situation rather than necessarily jumping right in? Because like sometimes that can be the the, the first step, the baby step, the training wheels that somebody needs to be able to invest. It's just, hey, I'm working for somebody else. I mean, I I, I used to paint houses for my, my mentor, Kyle, and I would just paint houses for him for like 300 bucks. It was like, I was the cheapest house painter ever to live. But $300, $300, whatever I made, I would paint it in two days, make 150 bucks a day. And it was awesome. And like that, like got me comfortable with the idea of owning rentals and, and, and more and more comfortable as I worked with him more, you know, we still have a great relationship today. So a yeah, really good way to start. So, uh, but I want to know more about the partner thing. I mean, you just, you found a partner who had money. Like, how does that work? How do you just find a partner, family, friends, like some guy on the side of the street with a sign? So it was actually the guy that hired me, his okay. uh, son. So I said, look what your dad is doing. Like, you know what, you should do this too. And he's like, you're right. So, um, I broke down the deal for him, explained how it work. And he put up the cash by the first property. So we formed an LLC together and then we, um, purchased the property in cash and he held the mortgage. Well, a couple months later, we found another apartment we wanted to buy. So we went to the bank, put a mortgage on the first property and took his cash back and he's, held the mortgage on the second property. And that's still how it is today on those two properties. So, but the yeah, biggest cool. thing was pitching to him just like how this can work and showing him examples of like, look, this is your dad is doing it. You can do it too. And, and I just showed him what kind of money he could make because he'd be, you know, building <clears throat> equity in the building. He'd be getting some of the cash flow and he was getting interest on the mortgage too. So it was actually a pretty lucrative deal for him. And then I managed everything. He, does nothing for it, which sounds like a bad thing, but he's the money guy and I take care of everything for him. So I love, I love, 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 love that. And I I talk about this on webinars a lot, the same topic. Like if, if, if you can bring some experience and you can bring some knowledge to the table, like you don't need to bring the money, find somebody else who's out there who has the money and doesn't have the knowledge, the experience. They're not sitting in a commute right now, like a lot of people are, listening to a Bigger Pockets podcast episode. They're sitting in a commute right now, listening to 80s rock, right? So there's something different about the people who are who have the knowledge and experience, and you you leverage that. And I think people undervalue that. Here's something funny. I found that people often will say, like, if I tell them that that I do that, because I used to do that all the time. That's how I got started as well in, in a lot of ways, right? I tell people, yeah, they didn't, they didn't, they don't do anything. They just put in the money. And uh, we split it 50-50. And I get two completely opposite reactions, right? Some people are like, well, why would they need you? They don't need you. Like that, you're taking advantage, or uh, they're, what is it? You're taking advantage of them. And other people are like, they're taking advantage of you. Like, why would they need you? Why would they need you? Or why would you need them, right? Like you're giving 50%. You're crazy. I'd give them 20%. But other people are like, why? Yeah, it's just funny. It's just all perspective, right? So like, that's, and we've worked together for a while now. So we've bought, um, we right now we have four properties together and one is a six unit. Um, and then we've also sold two that we had in our portfolio. But, um, I started with another partner too, 
um, this one probably two years ago and he was just a friend and he had a couple of his own properties and we found this town that just the, it was a renter's town. People just couldn't afford the housing. So we bought a couple properties there and we did everything 50, 50. So we split the money or, and then when we refinanced, we both were on the mortgage and we, he does the maintenance side of things. And then I do the leasing and tenant relations, stuff like that. This so. is that same partner. No, this is a different. Oh, okay. Partner. Okay. A different one. Okay. Yeah, so this would be my second partner. Yeah. yeah. So I have two right now. So, Again, you're showing that now that now that's a different way to use a partnership. I mean, I, right. I, this is great, right? So some partners are money partners and they put up all the money and don't do any work. Mm-hmm. So I have, I have some partners like that too. And other times your partner is, you're, hey, you're 50 50. Let's just divide the roles and divide the money. And that's fine as well. Right. Uh, so again, people, when they get that, that stuck moment of like, well, I don't have any money, I can't invest. Like it's just, there's always a way to figure it out. Uh, so there's I, always a way to yeah. find money too. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> learned. <laughs> yes. So Ashley, let me jump in. I want to ask you, you said that you went to your boss's son and you said, Hey, we should do this deal together. Tell us how you posed that proposal to them, what you said to help him see this is a good idea. Cause a lot of newbies want to do the same thing, but they don't know how to have that conversation or what they should say to get somebody else involved in their deal. Okay. The first thing that I did, and I remember it actually pretty vividly is I just put little like nuggets of information in his ear. I didn't overwhelm him with the numbers, anything like that. I just gave him examples of people we knew, including his dad of, you know, look at the success they've built. Um, His uncle had done the same thing with real estate. So I just put little nuggets in his ear. And then when I actually found the property, I brought him the numbers and everything. And by then he had already had interest in real estate investing and I had, you know, peaked that in him. So he looked at the numbers and he went with me to see the property. And um, he actually had a roommate at the time who was pretty handy. And his roommate was like, hey, I can help you guys even, you know, run and renovate a part of this and stuff like that. So it was just kind of putting the bug in his ear and just building it up. And then just when I was ready to take action, just like, hey, look, we ha- here's this opportunity right now. And um, just I showed him what, you know, he would be making off interest just over 15 years and what the potential cash flow was and then just the equity we were we would build in it so so you explained how the whole thing would work at a general level and let him kind (laughs) of let that sink in you didn't make him make a decision right then then when the opportunity came it sounds like you kind of had the whole thing figured out already he didn't have to do something he wasn't uncomfortable with you said here's what i need from you here's how the deal is going to look here's what we're going to do and really that made it very easy for him to say okay i'm on board you made that easy for the person to partner with you right Mm, yeah one thing we did was start the LLC. And so we got uh, life insurance policies on each other. So if something were to happen to him, I could use the life insurance policy to buy him out and vice versa. So, That's so smart. Out. I don't think right. anybody's so, ever given that tip on this show of 350 some episodes. I don't think anybody's ever given that tip. So wait a Well, bring it's so that. good. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, because it speaks to married. people's. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say it speaks to people's fear of losing money more than here's all yeah. the money you can make. You came out and showed this person how they are protected before you said what you need from them. Yeah, we did an operating agreement and then the life insurance policies because I was married and he wasn't at the time. So if something happened to him, it would go to his family members. And I didn't want to, you know, run these properties with, you know, his two siblings and his parents, and he didn't want to run the properties at all. So if something happened to me, he'd rather just buy my family out and then uh, just sell everything, probably. So. And, and who did you use to help you structure that agreement? Uh, we used an attorney. Okay. Did you just so Google actually, an attorney? Um, it was the attorney that we did for the closing on the property that we're going to have. It was um, an attorney I had actually used before for uh, when I built my own house and we've used her for various things. So she's just a small local attorney and she actually gave me the draft that she uses for the operating agreement and she let me go in and like make it specific to how I wanted it. And then she just like approved it, rewrite it and everything, but it saved a lot on legal costs of me actually filling in the information, stuff like that. And approximately how much did that cost to have that drawn up? Um, I think it was maybe $200 at most. There you go. What an awesome way to spend $200 to get your investor to feel comfortable partnering with you. 